there is no comorbidity more creepy and ill-understood than the schizoid malignant narcissist. To remind you, a malignant narcissist is someone who could be diagnosed simultaneously as a narcissist, a psychopath, and a sadist. <laughs> a delectable concoction. And so, some malignant narcissists are also schizoid. Schizoid personality disorder is an affliction which renders interpersonal relationships almost impossible. There's no interest in having interactions with other people, not even in sex. So put the three together. Malignant narcissism, which is again narcissism, psychopathy and sadism, coupled with schizoid a schizoid personality, and you have a veritable, a veritable oxymoron, a contradiction in terms, because narcissism by definition involves dependence on other people for narcissistic supply, input and feedback from the outside, which allows for internal regulation, internal regulation of a sense of self-worth and sometimes of emotions and moods similar to borderline personality disorder. So the narcissist is a junkie of attention. The narcissist is addicted to attention and attention comes only from other people. In other words, the narcissist is dependent on other people. And on the other hand, schizoids find any protracted interaction with other people excruciating. They hate to be in contact, definitely meaningful contact, emotionally infused contact with other people. And so there's a contradiction here. There's a dynamic clash, an internal conflict that is very difficult to resolve. Schizoid malignant narcissists usually obtain narcissistic supply impersonally, for example, virtually, online. They try to avoid interpersonal interactions face to face, in the flesh, so to speak. They try to construct environments where they are self-sufficient. They can, for example, make a living. At the same time, they can garner attention, adulation and admiration from anonymous sources, from people they don't know, they've never met and would never, would never communicate with. And so this is virtual narcissistic supply. And this is a typical setup or setting of the schizoid malignant narcissist life. It's a constricted life in the sense that it does not involve any meaningful exchanges with other human beings. And it does involve uh, interactions with symbols on the screen, pixels representations of human beings, which are very reminiscent of representations of people within the narcissist's mind, the internal objects. So the schizoid malignant narcissist who interacts with external emanations and manifestations of internal objects in the form of images on the screen or likes or followers or what have you. This is a form of, in many ways, this is a form of self-supply. And schizoid malignant narcissists are very adept at regulating their flow of supply by self-supply. They rely on self-supply much more than other types of narcissists who rely typically on other people for supply. Self-supply in schizoid malignant narcissism is not only a stopgap measures measure it's a preference it's a preference it's regulated it's controllable it's safe it's predictable it's as rich as as you can make it it's a fount of nurturance that the schizoid malignant narcissist finds infinitely preferable to having to um, kind of wade through 
relationships with other people. Relationships with other people in the schizoid malignant narcissist's mind resemble swamp, a swamp which you have to kind of wade through and there's always a risk of being sucked in and, and drowning. The schizoid malignant narcissist would rather protect himself or defend himself behind a screen, uh, behind, behind the glass brightly, if you wish, and harvest attention in a variety of highly impersonal uh, ways. But life, such as it is, forces one to be in touch with other people. Even the most dedicated, devout hermit in a monastery on, in Shangri-La ultimately has to come across the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> Life intrudes and its agents, other human beings, are all over the place. It's very difficult to avoid contact completely. Ultimately, you need to buy groceries. Usually, you need to pay bills. I mean, one way or another, you're going to end up face to face with this dread, another human being. When in touch with other people, even, even out of choice, the schizoid malignant narcissist becomes inordinately psychopathic and sadistic. He's annoyed, he's irritated, he is contemptuous, and he is hateful, and he externalizes aggression. There are several reasons to this abrupt transition from a benign, docile presence behind the screen to a raving lunatic and, and maniac, a hateful, with blazing eyes, psychopath, and a sadist, merciless, ruthless, callous, and revels, revels in pain and hurt that he causes others. This, this very, very abrupt, abrupt transition has several fountainheads, several reasons. Number one, it's partly intended to accomplish goals. In the absence of narcissistic supply, the, schizo the malignant narcissist resorts to sadistic supply. And the schizoid malignant narcissist um, actually prefers sadistic supply in face-to-face -face encounters because he's angry at having been coerced, having been forced to interact with people in the flesh. So every meeting, every encounter, every physical exchange, every, everything is perceived by the schizoid malignant narcissist as an, an imposition, an imposition, coercion, brutal invasion, an intrusion. And there's a lot of resentment. A lot of rage, a lot of anger involved. So, the schizoid malignant narcissist is much more likely to become sadistic in his or her encounters with other people, much more likely than the typical malignant narcissist, let alone the run of the mill, overt or covert narcissist. The risk of escalating potentially dangerous sadism in schizoid malignant narcissism is much higher, the highest actually, in all the variants, among all the variants of narcissism, because there is this rage of having been forced to be in touch with people. And because sadistic supply feels absolutely so good that it trumps any other form of pleasure, the schizoid malignant narcissist would self-sacrifice, self-defeat, and self-destruct just in order to experience the elation and the exaltation of having hurt or damaged another person. And so sadistic supply is pr preferred to narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is obtained indirectly, impersonally, as I said, via means of technology, and sadistic supply 
is face to face in face to face encounters and so the sadistic conduct of schizoid malignant narcissists in face to face encounters is utilitarian it's goal oriented and the goal is sadistic supply the second reason is punishment this is punitive punitive sadism the schizoid malignant narcissist wants to punish people for having him for having imposed on his time for having invaded his personal space for having consumed his scarce resources they deserve punishment they are far inferior to him and yet they forced him to their level and so they deserve to be penalized they deserve to endure some penance or and the sadism or the sadistic eruptions or bursts outbursts they are intended to punish the people who force themselves upon the presence of the schizoid malignant narcissist and finally sadism pushes people away gradually the schizoid malignant narcissist acquires such a reputation that people shun him avoid him at all costs so the sadism serves to restore the schizoid state and to vouchsafe to guarantee or to firewall the schizoid space they feed each other the schizoid malignant narcissist sadism and psychopathy they're helpful in generating the kind of environment and the kind of conditions that allow the schizoid malignant narcissist to ultimately remain all alone incommunicado no contact with anyone no friends no family nothing a total loner which is the optimal and much desired fantasy of the schizoid malignant narcissist it's a dream come true and the sadism and the psychopathy are kind of behavior modification techniques communicating to the human environment stay away let me be sadism creates and maintains the schizoid space the many ways sadism has many manifestations and many expressions in many ways when the schizoid malignant narcissist is in a relationship and what they define as relationships is nothing you would recognize <laughs> when they are in contact with another person who is the equivalent of a service provider the four s's sex services supply sadistic and narcissistic and safety so when they're when they cohabit with someone when they share the same space mental or physical with someone who is essentially a service provider they become highly possessive and jealous but the possessiveness possessiveness and jealousy has nothing to do with the fear of loss because the internet service provider is interchangeable and dispensable you you are utterly disposable it's not about um fear of loss it's about gotcha gotcha like i'm possessive i'm jealous it's a kind of entrapment entrapment which is intended to sadistically taunt you and torture you and to push push you to misbehave so that ultimately you justify the foresight and the omniscience of the schizoid malignant narcissist it's a form of sadism uh, there's no real jealousy there because do you, would you care if your internet service provider caters to other clients of course you do you don't you don't care it's the same with the schizoid malignant narcissist he doesn't care if his intimate partner is intimate with others she's a service provider obviously she could have other clients that's not a problem but he is going to impose on her strictures edicts rules of conduct surveil surveillance um and he's gonna he's gonna create a situation which communicates possessiveness and jealousy but actually is a form of micromanagement and coercive control 
Another form of sadism is called empathy, scanning the partner or other people for vulnerabilities and then leveraging these vulnerabilities, pushing the buttons, hurting where, where it, you know, hitting where it hurts. So vulnerabilities. And then there's setting up for failure, unrealistic expectations, standards that can never be met, reciprocity that is too ideal, no one can, can match it. And so these are all intended to set partner or the friend or whoever up for failure. The problem with, the malign with schizoid malignant narcissist is the mixed signals, the dual messaging. On the one hand, the narcissist, the narcissistic part in the schizoid malignant narcissism pushes the individual, pushes the schizoid malignant narcissist to approach people in order to extract supply, in order to enjoy uh, inflicting pain on them, degrading them, in order to be aroused by, by degrading and hurting other people. There's a need for other people. On the other hand, the schizoid part pulls the, the individual away. So there's an approach avoidance repetition compulsion here. There's approach in order to uh, benefit from human company and human touch, buttress grandiosity, share a fantasy, obtain narcissistic supply, etc. And then the schizoid part rebels schizoid part pulls the narcissist back and in order to maintain the schizoid space and to restore the schizoid state the schizoid malignant narcissist uses sadism to push people away and to establish the periphery the firewall periphery of his or her existence this could be extremely confusing and hurtful and potentially even dangerous. And that's why this particular hybrid, this comorbidity, to my mind, is the most complex of them all. And I will dedicate to it a few more videos in the future.